yo, 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 what's going on? This is the NRW, where nerds rule the world. I am Kuya P, and I'm joined by my big boy homie. You know him as Big Boy Escrimador of FMA School, Filipino Martial Arts. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? How's everybody going? How's uh, how we living now in this Cobra Kai world? You know, it's just, it's just, it's such a beautiful, beautiful day. So yes. excited to continue talking about Episode six through ten with my brother Kuya P, yes, and it's just, oh, we just can't break this down enough, fast enough. Yeah, so brother, yeah, we, we talked how so you do it. Part one, we were like, uh, I know, we're gonna, we I know, make this I a know. Two-parter. We got to um, make it two parts. Sorry so about good. that. But I'm, so but I'm upset that this is gonna be the last for a bit. So yeah, so y'all yeah. stay tuned. We'll be back with season four, but we're gonna bring you the warrior. After yeah, this. the warrior. So, exactly. I've already started on episode one yet, man, and uh. <laughs> I yeah, I, I'm a little backlog, but I'll, I'll get into it. I'll okay. definitely get into it. So uh, that's the project it's, for the it's week. It's totally night and day from Cobra Kai, bro. Okay. And make sure the kids aren't in the room because my daughter started walking in as I was starting it. And there's some sexy time, bro. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some good action and some sexy time. Okay. Right. Anyway, I'm distracted <laughs> from the, the from this, but let's get into it. Let's get into good, it. Good times. Uh, Cobra Kai Season 3, Episode 6 is called King Cobra. Uh, here we start off with uh, Kreese, uh, inspired by his special forces recruitment process. Kreese approaches various athletes to bolster the Cobra Kai ranks, including right. Kyler and Brooks. Uh, you'll remember them from episode one of season one when right. uh, uh, Johnny was uh, trying to get some food, food. at yeah. the 7-Eleven store and then here some, came some punk kids. So right. uh, these are these two characters back. So kind of cool to bring those guys back in. Uh, they join Kreese at Cobra Kai. Uh, that uh, pisses off Hawk because Hawk recognizes was the top dog because he was bullied yeah. before right. he became Hawk as we right. know him. So he has a problem with that. Uh, also during this time, Daniel and Amanda attempt to file a restraining order against Kreese, uh, but already learned that Kreese filed one against Amanda. So that's right. kind of a funny scenario there because we right. remember, as we said in uh, the previous episode, Amanda came to Kreese because of what went down, smacked the right. shit out of him because she wasn't having it, but right. Kreese. Chris, Chris, actually, that shows some 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 smarts there. I would, I didn't think he would have done something like that, but I mean, it's like okay, I mean, I'm he, play the game I with mean, you too. I mean, he um, was special. I mean, in his in his own right, he was special forces, right? So yeah. I mean, so he knows how to play the game. I mean, this is how he infiltrated Cobra in season two. He infiltrated Cobra Kai just like a snake, lying there waiting to pounce at the right moment, and he took the school from from Johnny. You know, he took his students. He took his school from Johnny, and you know, he's just like. And all he did was just kind of, you know, like Machiavelli style, just kind of whisper in his ears the wrong stuff. And then he, and then he pounced at the right moment. So, yep. but yeah, I mean, he's definitely, you know, he, you're, you're definitely, the, the great thing about this is that he's, that we're learning John Kreese is not just as, not just like, you know, a smash and bash type of person. Yeah. The guy's got a, a head, he's got, got a brain there. He definitely, damn, these writers they are giving him some depth. You know, yeah. kind of stuff. And, and actually, and, what's not covered here in this breakdown, and I think because it was covered in previous episodes, and I don't think we covered it when we were talking about it. Yeah. Um, but we did mention that, you know, we start getting backstory. We see right. that Kreese worked at a cafe and diner, was kind of bullied. Diner. Yeah. Uh, a diner. Yeah. I was working at a yeah, diner, yeah. got bullied. And right. when uh, on one occasion, we're, there's this recruiter that goes to talk to one of the patrons, uh, the patron the bullies, actually, the patron bullies that bullied yeah. him. They, they're like, nah, throw the shit on the ground. Crease picks it up. It's a flyer, right. recruitment flyer. And so that's how we learned that that's how Crease joins the military. Right. And that's how, you know, at first you didn't know if the big bully was John Crease or not. Yeah. Right? So yeah, we yeah, know. it was slightly confusing there. It was slightly confusing. And, and the writers and the directors definitely did a great job on fooling mm -hmm. us. But, <laughs> oh, I, okay. If we're going to talk about that real quick, we got to talk about the car that that bully was driving was the exact same car that 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 Miss, Mr. Miyagi gave Daniel. So that car is part of that story. I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, so that's where you found out that, you know, the beginning origins of, of John Kreese. He was just a normal American kid, but apparently his mother committed suicide. So okay. um, in that storyline. So now you can see where he's at. Um, and then now and then when that when that big bully was starting to hit his girlfriend, then that's when John Kreese kind of stepped up. And now it really makes sense why he didn't really raise his hand to Amanda because he still will never hit a woman, you know, and which is great. Don't get me wrong. But then again, 
These are the things that the writers are making me start to like about John Kreese. I hate you for making me I do know, that. Right? Right? <laughs> I hate you for making me do that. Yeah. But yeah. So with John Kreese, it's just kind of like, okay, he's got a history of that. And, uh, you know, that he's, he, you know, he will protect women kind of stuff. So, uh, and, you know, and then what's he did to Tori, you know, that's what he did. He protected her. I'm like, oh, stop making me like this guy a little bit. Right. Yeah. Stop it. Stop it. You know, <laughs> that's, I mean, it's these words make you love and hate these characters which is real about people in in, in real in life real life in real you know life what I'm saying? They, they have is, a lot of sides exactly yes we're not all the way perfect and yeah that's or all the way evil the brilliance of these yeah. writers Absolutely. we all have two sides to ourselves to our Jeez. personality i know so it's amazing yeah yeah so okay so let's move forward <laughs> all right so uh so um, amanda and daniel try to approach armand zarkarian who is the guy that owns the the building that Cobra Kai uh, inhabits uh, right. to try and get them to evict Kreese, but right. that doesn't happen because Kreese pulls the one up on them, even though Armand sends his goons. He sends and, his goons, right? Uh, like, he, he, oh, you think so? You, you fuck with the wrong one, and Kreese, it wasn't having it. You know um, what that scene reminded me of? Was Iron Man 2. <laughs> you, you know what the scene I'm talking about where, where that guy was he's like, no, you're going to do what I tell you. And he brought his two goons over there. Yeah. Take his bird. Take his shoes, right? And then next thing you know, those guys are hanging from the phone lines. And that, yeah, so that's where we might, that's the scene that remind me of. So, yeah. And I will never forget that guy from uh, Bora. I'm sorry. He's this, that, that the Armand Zarkarian, that act, whoever that actor is, shout out to you, man. Right, right, um, right, right. You just, I'll never forget you from Bora. You're still the same guy for me. Right, still the same um, but guy. Exactly. I'm happy you're still getting work. So, uh, after that, uh, Miguel helps Johnny take photos in order to build his Facebook profile. Right. I loved this scene. It's because, again, Johnny's so out of touch. He's so old school. He's 80s. But that whole kind of, uh, you know, him hanging out with, with Miguel, getting right. pictures done. He's like, man, I don't know about this. It, he was like a fish out of water. And he was, you know, Miguel was trying to hook him up, man. I just thought but it was really know, cute. No, and, and That relationship I, building there. So William Zabka, I think, used to actually be a model. Yeah, if I remember correctly. So, yeah. oh, he, and he, he, before before they even started taking pictures, remember, uh, he was like, they, he had tr Miguel was trying to help him find pictures. So they were right. going through his uh, Zapka's pictures, wow. and yeah, so the, he the had all these shirtless yeah. younger pictures. That was hilarious. That was, was hilarious. Was obviously, Zapka's old modeling pictures, right? The, exactly. The prop, and then, right. and then they started doing the pictures. But that was. That was great. And then he still knew how to model. He still knew how to model, right? Yeah. Even though he's pretending not to, but he still knew how to model. And then yeah. I think my favorite scene of that whole thing was when he tried sushi for the first time. Oh, yeah. that was. <laughs> <laughs> he was stabbing it. He's just stabbing it. I'm like, how can you practice uh, Asian martial arts and not know how to eat like Asian food? Yeah, you know? that that was that, 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 that was kind of weird. But yeah, it was. But it's it's in line with Johnny's character. And yep. I love how William Zapka has definitely committed to this character. The writers oh, yeah. have committed to this character that he is a gas station eating food, yeah. not a fancy restaurant yeah. that has it's, it's... Michelin ratings or anything like that. He's not that guy. Well, Daniel's of course a little bit more refined, you know, it's like, you know, so, but yeah, so he was definitely, he was, he was definitely playing with that one. And, but I also love the fact that, you know, um, <laughs> that one line when, you know, like, oh, you got some old photos of you? Yeah, let me get it. Stay right there. And he goes, <laughs> like, you can go anywhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that until you said that. That oh my goodness. is that was, hilarious. That was, he's I not mean, walking that is, he, He's hilarious. not walking. He's like, just stay right there. Don't go. And he's like, yeah, like, you can go anywhere. <laughs> that was messed up, man. That was messed up. They're making fun of a cripple like that. But yeah, so, I mean, and then, yeah, it's just, I, I, you can see that you know Johnny and and and, and Miguel, their bond is just getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And at the end, what did he do with the photos, Kuya P? What did he do? He he, he didn't use them. Yeah, yeah, he didn't yeah, use yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he, he didn't he use them. Yeah, he deleted it. Yeah, he deleted and he just wanted to post the real stuff, the stuff that's him, you know, him teaching and whatnot, right? And of course, you know, um, you know, one of the things that's so hard about Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. is that you can see when they read it. Yeah. And how long they're taking to reply. You know, you're <laughs> like, um, is she mad at me now? You know, that's kind of, that's kind of what that is. So it's, it's, yeah, I love that episode. I just think that, you know, you see another side of Johnny really being attentive to Miguel and whatnot and, and just trying to be, you know, but they're trying to put his best foot forward. So, 
but when he decided to throw away those pictures, he he decided to stop being fake. Mm-hmm. He decided let's just be let's just be Johnny. Yeah. Johnny Hua. It, it was is again the brilliance of the writing on these episodes, man. I love it. All right, so uh, after they take the photos, um, uh, Miguel calls out Johnny on his hypocrisy about abandoning people after helping mm-hmm. them, but manages to stand up in the process. So he finally stands up. With, so right, right. we get that at the end of the scene. Uh, so, right. but I didn't know, but you brought up that, I didn't notice that that phrase. So that's kind of hilarious. And then it leads to this. Um, yeah. And then uh, seeing the truth in Miguel's words, Johnny uploads the photos of his positive accomplishments with his students and Miguel's mm-hmm. recovery before sending Ali a heartfelt uh, message on Facebook. So, right, right. Uh, but we know that, but as we know that he didn't send the pictures, he just bees himself and then sends, right. you know, he's, he's himself now, you know, so. Right. Um, but yeah, just touching, touching, uh, just a good, good piece uh, there to kill a, I to mean, finish episode exactly. six. I mean, I mean, I think like one of the, the struggles, the internal struggles that Johnny's going through is that he's felt, he, he was feeling for a longest time he was inadequate. Yeah. He wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. Right. And now he's starting to say, I am enough. Mm-hmm. Right, I am a good guy. I, yeah. I'm not. I'm, you know, I was, I was taught wrong, yeah. Right, and so, but I am a good guy, you know, kind of stuff. And he's, and he's trying to really show that, and he's trying to show the real, the real side of that. So, I love it. I love that Johnny's evolving, finally starting to catch up to the real world, and start, you know, he got a Facebook account, kind yeah. of stuff. So that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm just glad he went to Friendster first and then, <laughs> then myspace and remember prodigy oh my god oh, i still know people that has an aol email wow. address I'm like, what yeah what? yeah yeah same AOL, that's, so. that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> aol that's still around I so know, right? all right so, so let's head to episode seven obstaculos mm-hmm. uh sam has a dream where she and tori duel uh in the miyagi do dojo uh, yeah and then after days of training miguel can finally walk again miguel's walking Daniel spends the day with Sam in order to help her overcome her fear of Tori. Mm-hmm. Um, at school, Miguel helps. Uh, Miguel finds out about the golf and stuff fight, uh, mm-hmm. that which was the place that one of the Miyagi Do uh, kids worked at, and so he cuts right. his ties with the Cobra Kai students. Uh, right. Johnny then decides to take his loyal students and make a new dojo called right. Eagle Fan Karate, which we'll expand upon. I know you want to say something about that in a second. Yeah, and I do, I do, I do. The Cobra Kai students then confront Johnny, where Kreese decides to leave Johnny permanently. Now right. let's talk about this. What did you think of Eagle Fan Karate? Okay, Eagle Fan, I just... Eagles I mean, don't have fangs. He, I know, Eagles don't have fangs, but when he was like, what do, what, like, what 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 kills, or like, what what do snakes, uh, what, what, who beats... And the kid was right, it's actually Mongoose. Yeah. Right. It's like you know. So, but you're and eagles do 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 uh, do that. But I love the fact. Maybe I'm over over thinking this, but a snake lies in the ground while an eagle soars in the sky. Like they're not hiding anything. They're up there, kind of stuff. And they, you know. So now I think Johnny's saying, "I'm ready to stop lying in the ground as in this as a snake. I'm yeah. ready to be. I'm ready to you know ready you know, to stop myself. It's ready yeah. to soar. Right. I'm. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Like. The, the, the symbolism of flying through the air is a symbol of freedom, yes. symbol of being able to no longer be tied down by gravity, no longer be tied down by what your past. You're free. You can be whoever you want and you can grow fangs, even though it's physically impossible, but you can grow fangs if you want kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. But I think that was the thing. It's like um, uh, I think that Johnny really, I mean, gravitated towards that. Maybe I'm again, maybe I'm overanalyzing this very possible. But uh, but I think that that's the whole thing. It's like a cobra lies in the snake, it lies on the ground, waits, you know. But then a, an eagle, just as deadly, just as just just as uh, uh, s- surgical in its strike, kind of stuff. But he's no longer he's 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 free. He's free. He can be himself. And I had a little bit of a flashback myself when he was looking for a commercial site for his studio. That's a lot of the same struggles that I came up with. But I, like you know you. You, you find this really nice place, but it's way above your budget, yeah. right? And then you find this really piece of crap, and it's still way above your budget. You're like, what the heck is going on, right? And then he found out that the park was free. I mean, come on, man. I think the parks were free back in the 80s too, bro. So I don't think that's just a new thing, but I yeah. love it. He's like, you mean so? And then he's just asking some random guy. He's like, so I thought that was hilarious. Absolutely yeah. hilarious. So I think that that was, I, I, think, I mean, yeah, Eagle Fang. 
it's, I mean, there's no such thing as a, a fang that, you know, they, they don't have fangs, they have talons, yeah. right? And, you know, they have, of course, their beak is, you know, is in that shape where it can penetrate through skin, but, uh, but they're definitely not, there's no talons on that one. But, yeah. you know, it's his school. He can name it, you know, <laughs> pick polka dots if he wants. He can name it whatever he wants, right? Yeah. So I, I, I much respect for that one. The thing that really gravitated towards me in that, in that episode was the scene when 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 Daniel and Sam was in the boat, and if you remember in one of the episode in one of the original movies, Daniel was sitting on uh, standing on the bows of the ship, and then Mr. Mary goes, "How you learn to swim?" And then they and then he actually flashed back to the other, like we tried to do that to you, but you weren't you weren't falling, yeah, you know. But I remember like for me like the best advice that Mr. Miyagi gave Daniel was in in, in Karate Kid three when he was losing to that guy and he goes, it's okay to lose to opponent, but must not lose to fear. And that's what Sam was going through. Sam was having nightmares. He, she's reliving that moment over and over and over again. She has been um, kind of like, she's been, she's been frozen when she, when one of her, when one of her guys was being, was her, his arm was being broken by Hawk. Right. And she, it's an incapacitating fear. And Daniel knew that if they don't uh, they don't address this now, it's gonna just get worse and worse. Yeah, it was just gonna get worse and worse. And Daniel loves his daughter. You can clearly tell he really loves Sam. He really and then he can he sees himself in Sam in that same level of fear that he got when he was fighting the that guy in Karate Kid three. But he knew that it was time for him to to be the dad and just say, listen, you you don't have to be afraid. I got you. But you also have to stand up. You have to stand up for yourself. You have to stand up for, for this or else they will continuously, continuously, continuously get you down. Now, I've always said this to my students is that it's not about getting knocked down. Everybody gets knocked down, right? It's about how strong are you to be able to get up and dust yourself off and keep moving forward. And mm-hmm. that's essentially what Daniel is trying to say to his daughter. You got to get up. You got to get up, Sam. You can't yeah. just... You, it's okay to lose to her, but you can't lose to fear. And that to me was great job, dad. Yeah. You know, you get the, the mug of dad of the year uh, on, on that one for me. Um, and, and he really, you know, and it really, it, it really helped her find her balance. Right. I mean, she didn't even want to do with anything with karate anymore. Yeah. Not because she, not because she just didn't want to, but I, I think she just didn't feel she was worthy of it. Yeah. She was yeah. worthy of it. And I think that was really, that was really, really powerful that Daniel took that time to to really you know talk to his daughter about this because it was it's i mean traumatizing you know she she get cut for the first time under her arm and then she sees the guy that she's you know she 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 really cares about or loves you know almost you know break his back on the uh, and falling from the thing and the guy the other guy she's dating was the one that did it you Mm -hmm. know so and then now seeing one of her guys get her arm broken and then being feeling incapacitated that was that was very very powerful yeah yeah, now I gotta watch that episode again because if they didn't use that those words that you said from part three from Miyagi, because yeah, I remember they didn't that classic use those line. Words. I don't yeah, think he they and I don't think words. they did. And so no, I think that's didn't. a missed opportunity that if he would have recited those same words, that would have been great. Um, I know, I so, know, I know. So we're gonna take one away from you, writers. You've been <laughs> remarkable, you've been outstanding, but you right. missed this one opportunity. With the, with one opportunity, I know. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Episode eight, the good, the bad, and the bad ass. Uh, the right. local city council removes the permit for the All Valley Karate Tournament Championship right. in order to politically distance itself from the whole big fallout that we remember from uh, season two. Season two. Uh, right, so, yeah. with that being said, Daniel, Crease, Johnny, uh, all go to this uh, council meeting to make their cases, and uh, the personal attacks increase. Uh, Crease is there. Amanda, Miguel, and Sam make their appearances. Uh, everybody makes their case for them to change uh, the They're the ruined. council's mind. Uh, right, right. They obviously do. Um, and uh, during that aftermath, Miguel and Sam catch Wait, up. Wait, they did? Oh, man. Spoiler alert, man. Come on, no, y'all. We're, we're doing a whole season recap. Y- y'all should know this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during the aftermath, Miguel and Sam catch up, and they uh, have a friendly sparring session, which right. uh, Pops D- uh, Daniel walks in on. That was kind of awkward. Um, and then uh, yeah. Robbie, uh, having That's completed his sentence, is uh, released, and he sees the sparring session. And uh, and thinks Samantha's cheating on him, but they've kind of right. you know they've kind of gone their separate ways, man. After everything that yeah. happened, yeah, uh, exactly. Robbie turns to Crease for help. 
So now that's where Robbie goes after seeing that shit go down, and that's not good. Right. And right. Uh, Johnny and Carmen uh, have some fun, fun. Miguel's yep. mama. I'm like, exactly. go ahead, Johnny. Johnny finally go, getting go, some. Go, go. Johnny got get some, some. You know, finally, finally. <laughs> so let's break down know, this episode: finally... the good, the bad, and the badass. Uh, what did right. you think first of uh, the the city council meeting and everybody being there and them all sitting together? That was kind of awkward. That was awkward. So all three, okay. Johnny, Chris, yeah. Daniel, Sinigan. Amanda. Yeah, exactly. And also Amanda was there and she had to be removed from the council meeting. Yeah. So again, Chris being the freaking brilliant per and writers, you're making me like this guy. I hate you. But when he's like, it's council person, you know, it's like he was the politically correct one. I'm like, no, man, you can't be Pete, man. This sucks, man. You gotta be gender by gender neutral now, man. I, I, you know, I need, I need, I need something to continuously hate you, right? <laughs> Stop making me like you. Um, yeah. So that was, and that was, it was, and you know, honestly, I that one, was, that episode was hard to swallow for me because one, why can't they go to another town? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number two, there is way more than three three dojos in the whole in that whole area. Right. <laughs> I mean, martial arts, I mean, okay, so that you have to understand about the martial arts business, that if you, if your school has, is geographically locked, right, you usually only get students within a five mile radius, right? That's why there's schools in almost every, it's all like a Starbucks, right? They're, they're like in every corner. Why is there only three students, three schools that are like, yeah, man, we're pissed that it's canceled. You know, I'm like, <laughs> where's the other schools? You know, yeah. this is your livelihood, right? This is, I mean, tournaments are very essential part of, of the martial arts business and industry, mm -hmm. right? So it's an essential thing. So if you don't do those, then it's not, it's, you know, what are they, what are the kids going to do? So, uh, but yeah, the parent, the, the, the three, the three senseis didn't get the job done. <laughs> Who got the job done? Miguel and yeah. Sam. Yep. Right. Because they were talking about, we need to do this. This is a part of us. This is, this is change. I was bullied, but now I'm not. Did yeah. they make a mistake? Yes, they did. I love the fact that they, 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 they took ownership and what happened, but they're trying to rectify it. They're trying to do right by it. So I love this episode because yeah, Amanda definitely, again, mama bear came out and, and then like this is ridiculous, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, you know, like I have a restraining order for her because, you know, she came over and I'm like, dude, this guy really knows how to play the game bro you know he just knows how to play the game you know so and so you know so she gets taken out and then you know and then so they they were able to you know establish themselves that they were going to still have the uh, you know all valley under 18 all valley you know tournament but yeah though i mean that's my first thing it's like if this city won't do it then there's other cities i mean california is littered with them you know kind yeah. of stuff right yeah you can go to another county you know kind of stuff so it's it's not impossible I think that the immediately them saying that, you know, the, the, the city will pull their permit. Honestly, as a, I, I've hosted multiple martial arts tournaments myself. Yeah. I don't go through the city. Yeah. I don't use public. I, 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 I use it once, but I don't use public places anymore because there's so much red tape. There's so much red tape. Yeah. You, I mean, I mean, honestly, you could set up a tent at the, at the LaRusso parking lot, uh, you know, car lot. Yeah. And you can host a tournament there as long as you get insurance. An yeah. insurance company don't care what happened before as long as they can they get they get paid. They can raise your premium, right? Kind of stuff. And you can you can have it there. But ultimately, I don't understand why they have to even go through the city. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 I guess part of the drama. But that's just the the industry person talking here. But I did I did like the fact that you know it was it was me, Miguel and uh, Sam that yeah. saved the day. Yep. What are your thoughts? I uh, thought it was great. I, I, it was just interesting to have the three of them together. And yeah. I was just, I was very curious after watching it, knowing that I'd be doing this with you because you have that professional experience and background, how, how right. that would have happened in real life. So right. uh, I appreciate right. that take. Um, right. So yeah, just, just a good character building uh, with this episode. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It was just a good piece there. Um, the, the the biggest part of this episode that hit me as a father is uh big on daniel i would have been a little bit more uh bro get yourself I, back no, that ain't happening in my I, house i, 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 I would have been I like what do just don't do it in my I would, house i would have been like come in come like, get away my daughter 
Oh you my know? god, that would have been so awkward. And by the way, their kiss was a little bit more than PG thirteen. Now, you know, I, I saw some tongue action there. I'm like, <laughs> they're not, they're you not pretending anymore. You know, and I, I know, you know, I have a daughter. I know it's going to happen. Just respect me in my house. That's it. You know. Yeah, and it that's wasn't it actually it wasn't their house. It was the it was the dojo. Exactly, but still, that's it part of the a, house. That's that's house. Exactly. That's 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 the <laughs> Mr. Miyagi's house. That's <laughs> Mr. Miyagi's house, man. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, it's just kind of like, oh, awkward, awkward. Yeah. And Daniel's like, oh, uh, <laughs> this is awkward, you know? Yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. I mean, and then, and then I love the fact that I guess the, the writer's trying to remind the audience yeah. that they're still teenagers. Exactly. You know, they're, exactly. they're still kids and dad, Young Daniel's love. not the dad. Daniel's out the dad kind of stuff. So it's like, yeah. uh, this is my awkward, <laughs> you know, super awkward, super yeah. sad. I would have brought stuff, written so. the same thing too, as, as a writer. Yeah, you got to show that. It's young love. Yeah, show it's young and, love. I mean, yeah. that's a, that's a whole And they were coming back together one. again now because they, yeah, exactly. Together. Exactly. He left to, exactly. you know, he was with Tori, and which I'm now kind of sad to see because now, what is, again, like I told you, one of my big things with this, and we'll, you know, save this towards the end. But again, like really the biggest character development for Tori was episode two of this season. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now she's just kind of a bad girl. And like, who is she not going to, is she going to get with Robbie? And like, how is right. that going to go? Because, right, but they're right. both bad guys, if you know, right, right. as it were, you know, at the right, moment. Right. So right. yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, so yeah, so let's get to Robbie, you know, turn into Crease now. How do you feel about that? It was, it was bound to happen. I, I think Robbie is lashing out. I mean, not to yeah. overanalyze it. I'm not no psychiatrist, but yeah. he had he had a real father that mm -hmm. that turned his back on him, you know, for most of his life. He, he had a secondary father, which is Daniel, that he feels that's turned his back on him. So now I think he's lashing out, like, how do I hurt these two guys? Yeah. Well, John Kreese. Yep. You know, John Kreese, and John Kreese, of course, being the tactician that he is. Yeah. You know, like, hey, you want a place to stay? You can stay with me. Yeah. You know, and and you know, he was. Then he became the star pupil. Yep. He became the star pupil. Yeah. And um, and now he was doing, you know, now and then the thing about it is, you know, unfortunately, he I can see it now. Johnny is trying is trying to learn Daniel's style. Yeah. You know, and because Robbie was Daniel's student. Yeah. You know, and, and so now I think John is gonna try to John Priest is definitely gonna try to see Daniel's style and to see if he can create a counter for it. And mm -hmm. I think this is why. In the previous episode where, where Daniel was in Okinawa, his F, his martial arts had to evolve. Yeah. Okay. Because this yeah, is the yeah. style that he hasn't shown to anybody else yet. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he hasn't shown it to to Sam or Robbie or Miguel or even you know Johnny. This mm -hmm. is this is the new his new technique that he has that he's that that you know there's doing that. So I think that's why the writers, see writers, you know, <laughs> like oh, you're doing it again. Yeah. I think that's I think that I mean the way that the timeline plays out. Yep. Um, I'm seeing now that um, uh, Miguel is definitely, I mean, excuse me, Robbie is John. I mean, John Kreese is definitely trying to get to see Miguel, uh, Robbie's style of fighting so that he, because yeah. he already knows John Kreese's style. I mean, mm -hmm. John, Johnny's style, right? Yeah. Because he's the one who taught it to him, right? He knows yep. his style, right? So now we're talking about, okay, how do I learn this Miyagi Do style? And, you know, so now he gets, he gets access to Robbie. Yep. study his style, study his technique, and then, then create a counter for it. Now, in martial arts, we all know this, every technique has a counter. Yep. That's just a fact, right? Mm -hmm. So now, and with John Kreese being this intelligent, he will definitely try to dissect. He's trying to get to know his enemy, dissect it, learn about it, and then use it again, flip it on them at the All-Valley Tournament. Yep. That's why I think that the writers, you know, the previous episode, Daniel is now learning the a higher level of my Miyagi Do karate. We are getting flags of setup, and I and we'll, we'll, we're not going to get into it's episode nine and ten, but I think a lot of this is going to go play as a part into our predictions for season four, uh, because right, absolutely, just what you said. These are these are high signs of what they're building us into, and but making us wait. Uh, but what we're going to get delivered in season four. So let's right. head into <laughs> uh, episode nine. Feel the night. Uh, Allie with the eye is in town for the holidays uh, to right. visit her parents, and Johnny meets her for lunch. Um, right after uh, he hooked up with and, uh, his mom, 
Miguel, huh. after he hooked up with Miguel's mom. Oh, I know. And we're going to – actually, I forgot. I wanted to talk on that a little bit real quick. But we'll get right, there right, after. Right. We'll, we'll break this episode down. So, so, so we'll start with that getting together. Right, right. Uh, so Ali's in town and meets Johnny for lunch. Uh, the Cobra Kai students are wary about Robbie's presence uh, now that Robbie is part of Cobra Kai now with Chris. Right, right. Uh, but they warm up to him after they go on a mission to the zoo to steal a snake. Uh, right. Wouldn't have been me because I fucking hate snakes. Uh, anyway, Miguel and Daniel uh, start to find some common ground about Johnny and Daniel's childhood. Mm -hmm. And Ali and Johnny spend the day together at golf and stuff, which is a great right. throwback. And we'll talk on that as well. Uh, to... I think there's only one date place in that area. I know, it's right? Golf and stuff. <laughs> there's no other place. Golf and stuff. That's where you go on a date. Yeah. So. And then uh, Sam and Miguel create an alliance between Eagle Fang and Miyagi-Do in order to make their preparations against Cobra Kai. Uh, right. And then we'll lead into the last episode. All right. So uh, Carmen, and uh, to, before this episode starts, uh, leading off uh, last week, or oh, the, the episode right. eight, Johnny and Carmen finally uh, knock boots. You know, knock boots. Uh, you know, do the horizontal Body rocking, mambo. knocking boots the, all night yeah, long. The, the, the dancing with no pants on, you know, kind Woo! of stuff. So, so we're, I gotta say this first. I'm happy. For, I'm, I'm definitely happy for Johnny, man. Oh, I'm happy for Johnny, but I am questioning his handyman skills. <laughs> Cause the TV fell down. I'm oh, like, yeah. come on. I mean, <laughs> you didn't hit her that hard, homie. I mean, I know the throws are passion, but the TV fell down. Come on, man. You're a handyman. Yeah, that, that was wasn't much first, of a tap against was, the wall when it fell down. I know. It wasn't like, come on, bro. It wasn't, I mean, he's, I mean, you're, you're going to hit her that hard. She would go through the fucking wall, man. I'm sorry, but I know I probably shouldn't be focusing on that right now, but, but that's what I, I focus know. on. No, I'm with you. Cause I noticed it as well. And my wife wa was actually watching this episode with me <laughs> and we were like the TV, it was noticeable, <laughs> dude. So I'm, I'm like, <laughs> you didn't mount, I'm like, you don't know how to mount it correctly. That was your job, bro. In season one. That yeah. would, I mean, you got fired from it, but that was your job from season one. That's your own TV. That's yeah. messed up, man. Yeah. That's not cheap. But I didn't. But yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, you know, I get it. You know, like Miguel's mom, Carmen, is that her name? Carmen? Yes. Right. Yeah. She probably feels lonely, you know, in the yeah. sense that, you know, she's got this, you know, her son, you know, essentially might not walk again. Yeah. She's been and through the trauma. guy that she been through trauma. Yeah. And, you know, remember. Like Miguel's dad, I think who still could be Terry Silver, who knows? But um, Miguel's dad was a bad guy, and so she's she's like she. I can understand why she's standoffish on him, right? But finally, this is the guy that that not only helped my son walk again, but made my son look forward to tomorrow again, right? And also, you you know, then you look at the person completely because now you see the the sensitive side. And also you hear, wow, 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 you know, kind of stuff, right? And it's like, well, okay, there you go. So they're knocking boots. But I just think that, you know, they've been through a lot. Yeah. They've been through a lot. And nobody else is going to understand what they've been through except each other. Yep. Because nobody else loves Miguel outside of, you know, outside of both of them. Yeah. Really, on that level where they yeah. just want him to be happy. Yep. You know, they just want him to be happy. Maybe Sam. Okay, I'll give you Sam. But, you know, but... But, you know, so the trauma that they are going through that only they can share. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But you still mounted that TV wrong. I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, you still, I mean, it shouldn't fall that easily. Whatever. Yeah. You know, it's just so, those are paper thin walls, man. So, <laughs> so get let's get it. into no. this episode. So with that being said, I really like Carmen's character and I'm happy these two got together. So, yes. you know, this again, this was probably my third favorite episode. Like I said, the, the Okinawa visit, those were my favorite two with this actually competing in that, in that third as, position, right. you know, as, as, as for the, for this uh, season. Um, right, so right, they right. go on on, he goes, goes on a date with Allie. Uh, right. Super excited to see Elizabeth Shue finally back. Beautiful. Uh, they meet up and just this whole episode was very romantic, man. It just, it was catch up. And then, then they meet up at the party where and that throwback to the original episode, the the original yep, the suit, uh, yeah. film the where spaghetti. you know Daniel walks in uh or Johnny walks in or you know the, the whole spaghetti incident uh is just ah Too these much. fucking writers it's, and just I hate these guys I love yeah. you guys but I hate you at the same time <laughs> just the I want to buy you I want I, I want to buy you guys a drink but that's same and slap you at the same time yeah so I'll buy you the drink first so it hurts less so yeah, like, kind of <laughs> Like the whole time, like, well, actually rewind it back. So like, you know, Carmen and them and Johnny finally hooked up. So I'm like, bam, right. finally 
Johnny has a real love and they right. have love. You you know that there's right, chemistry right. between the two of them. Right, right. But then right. but we do have this lingering thing with Ali. And right. you we see the apprehension on his face. But we see that he decides to do it, but he very kept it very, you know, standoffish. You know, like there was yeah. opportunities that they could have kissed, they didn't kiss, but, but they, there was tension. Did. And there was almost it, yeah. They and go course, out, they go to his this mom event. ruins it. His mom her mom ruins it, you know. It's like yeah. So yeah, but you, it's like you want it to happen, but then you don't want it to happen because we know that Johnny also has somebody now, and right. But then we know the, the with the, the whole alley situation needed to get resolved. Um, right. I love the dinner with the the Larusos and, and, yes. and Ali, and then uh, and, and uh, Amanda, Amanda, Amanda getting tight with Ali. Right. That, right. And bro, we also had another uh, loose end resolved: the messing up. <laughs> Of Miyagi's car. Did you catch right. that? Yeah, I caught that. He's like, yeah, you probably blame me for the what happened to your car. And then it's like, yeah, there's and then just go ahead, say your line, brother. There's two sides to every story. There's three sides, three sides. Three sides. Yeah, three sides. There's your story, there's my story, and then there's the truth. There's the truth, exactly. Bro. Exactly. And, so good. Exactly. Was that not so, man, that was, was beautiful. From ear to ear, that was beautiful. Bro. They that close was beautiful. up these loose ends and they give you finality to stuff you didn't even know you wanted just like right. with yuna coming back i didn't know i yeah. wanted yuna to come back but she came back and she was a hero again she was like, a hero again and, man, and she like she's brilliant. paying the debt that she that she she incurred many years ago you know and honestly i don't think if, my, if i was daniel I'm like you don't owe me anything because by ringing the bell you saved my life yeah you know what i'm saying so yeah. i'm actually returning the favor when i saved yours if we're gonna do the whole indebted thing kind of stuff right yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, when I saw him, like, I mean, I was telling, I was just literally telling to my students this a few, like a few hours ago, I was like, who is that? She looks, oh my gosh, it's, ha -ha! I was like, oh, I was screaming from the top. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, not her. <laughs> you know, it was crazy. But, uh, you know, Ali with the eye definitely was like, you know, it's a good closure. Right. And, um, and, and the truth of the matter is now we're seeing that Ali never really got over Johnny also. Yeah, yeah. It you was know? so beautiful. So, and, to, but, and for her to finish it up though, like she could tell that he wasn't all the way there. And, yeah. But then, all, but but didn't lock away that there wasn't a potential maybe for the future. You know? Right, right. Wishing him, you, and because, and that's, if you really care about somebody, you want them to find their own, you know, figure themselves out. So right. you know, that's Absolutely. your path and that's your path. I'm gonna be happy for right. you and I'm gonna support you. Right. But you right, know, right. but then also, you know, I'm here for you as well as well. No matter. Right. I just, I loved it. It was such a great episode, it. bro. And then, was... and then the writers again was teasing us because you know, she's getting a divorce. Yeah, so that means she's available. I'm like, oh Lord Jesus, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't handle these, you know, kind I know. of stuff. But yeah, I know she's getting now. I, clearly, she is not Tori's mom. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. that was my prediction. For yeah, the, that, when that did I thought of you on when they said that too. Yeah, so I mean. definitely she's not. I mean, she's not. She and I saw. Oh well, I was wrong, right? But so, um, but I just, I just think that the last name is too coincidental. But yeah. then I've been noticing that one of the producers' his last name is the same. So maybe <laughs> they just threw the last name in there just for something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. But, but the point is, it's like, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like Amanda was really cool. Like, you know, she's like, I, oh, I really need to hear this story, right? Kind of stuff because I've only heard it from this fool, you that know, so and good. you know, and we. And, and so she's like, and that does like three sides of every story, your side, your side and the truth. And she was able to finally lay down some truth into that. Right. And, and whatnot. And yeah, basically they broke up because Daniel got jealous. Mm -hmm. That's essentially what Ali would, I would say like, no, he got jealous too. Right. I'm like, well, all right. You know? So, I mean, everybody's getting jealous over, you know, of all the guys that she talks to. Yeah. I don't know if she's got weird flavored it. It nipples or something, but so, yeah. but yeah, I mean, it was, it was brilliant. It was a really good thing. And, and I don't know, I think Daniel, I would have been hella like nervous oh, having yeah. my wife <laughs> and my ex there. I think yeah. Johnny would have been like, I definitely am not envious of you right now. <laughs> not that I ever was, but I yeah. definitely am not envious of you right now. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the only way that could have been making more awkward is if uh, Kimiko was also at that dinner. You know, I think that's yeah. the only thing that would have made that more awkward, right? So, and then, or or maybe Ch Chosen was there, and all of a sudden he's got two of his rivals, and he's like, "Uh, <laughs> which one do I hate?" You know, uh. Yeah. But yeah, so that was a really good, 
you can tell that they're they're definitely evolving they're growing up you know they're trying to and we're trying to get some different perspectives of the stories kind of stuff i love it i loved it it was a really great episode um and just kind of and then i love the fact that the cobra kai kids i mean excuse me the the eagle fang and the miyagi do kids they decided to have a freaking like you know treaty of versailles you know kind of stuff right where they're just like okay we and they had it written down we're gonna start training at miyagi do like yeah because that place is a park yeah we're gonna train here right and yeah. like what technique like honestly i don't know how they're gonna work that part out as a martial artist there's only one top dog in, in a school it has to be this way because if you know everybody it's it's you know what a lot of people forget about martial art it's an art meaning it's self-expression it, it means that my my technique might be different from yours, but doesn't make it wrong. It's just different, right? But at the end of the day, you're trying to teach students, somebody has to be the final voice. And Johnny and Daniel are just too, you know, to this and who's going to be the be final voice. And it's going to be definitely interesting. And um, it's going to be, it's definitely going to be that. So, but yeah, so I love the fact that, that the kids were trying to find some sort of common ground. They were trying to find some common ground. And of course, John P said, my en the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Well, Sam and, and, the, and the white uh, Eagle fan guys did like, yeah, we have a common enemy. We have to, we have to, we have to go after these people and, and, you know, and, and train together and pull our resources together. And all, for, all of a sudden, you know, they get attacked. Yeah. They get attacked. And, and um, finally um, what I love about that scene was Sam, finally confronted Tori. Am I jumping into Oh, the yeah, episode? actually now. So let's see. Yeah, we're Sorry. episode 10. My bad. Finale episode. Here we go. All right, right. We'll break it down down and then give you our thoughts for the next season. All right. Episode 10 is uh, entitled December 19th. While Ali and Johnny mingle with Daniel and Amanda at the Christmas party, uh, they lay their passages to rest. Uh, Tori leads the rest of Cobra Kai in instigating a fight at the LaRusso residence. Mm -hmm. uh, during the ensuing melee, uh, Hawk turns on Cobra Kai. Uh, while Sam conquers her fear with Tori and gains an upper hand on her. Uh, Miguel right. overcomes his limitations to defeat Kyler. Uh, right. Tori escalates. Uh, Hawk intervenes, uh, telling her the fight is over, prompting her to leave. Uh, mm -hmm. Johnny and Daniel uh, separately leave, uh, uh, learn of the ensuing conflict after the party, with Johnny right. instigating a fight and winning his first with fight Johnny. with Kreese. Uh, right. Robbie chooses to fight Johnny and is accidentally knocked out after being pushed into a set of lockers. Crease uh, right. uses the opportunity to, to murder Johnny, but Daniel intervenes and gains the upper hand using the pressure point techniques he learned from Chosen, which was brilliant. Uh, right. Daniel barely uh, Daniel barely spares Crease after being stopped by Sam and Miguel. Right. Crease agrees to ceasing hostilities until the upcoming tournament, while right. Robbie sides with Crease. Uh, during right. the aftermath, Crease gives a call to Terry Silver in order to solicit a favor. For saving well, Silver's we don't know. We don't know it's Vietnam Terry Silver. War. We're assuming it's Terry Silver, but we don't. We're not sure if it's Terry Silver. It's Terry. So, Silver. I. Terry Silver. It's not. <laughs> yeah. And while Daniel and Don Johnny train the students, uh, their students together at the Miyagi Dojo, an amazing finale. So much to talk about with this the, this ender. Um, and okay, we'll have our me, predictions. But go ahead. Let me let me just say. Let me just say this. Off. Back back to the previous episode. Where, where John Kreese was in Vietnam yes. and then he was hanging and then they were passing out the letter. You could totally tell that one guy was Johnny was, was Terry silver. Why? Cause he had the ponytail, right? You were in the military. Would they allow an active member have a lot, a male to have that long hair? Well, at that time it was a different, I don't know if they had the same regulations back then. I don't know. I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. But if I've seen a lot of Vietnam pictures, that it they, they were kind of lax because they were going through hell so could be but the thing is his hair was too perfect <laughs> you know it's like yeah i mean here's the way i mean here's i've never been what bothered me worse was the was the uniforms those uniforms would have been a lot more soiled a lot more dirty a lot more run through yeah. the ragged than right. looking fresh out the right. the, the, the the clothing manufacturer that's what bothered right. me the most Right. So I'm just calling out to anybody who served in the army, especially if you are a, a you know military historian or you were you were in that you know you know people in that area or you were in that area. For those watching, let me know right now. Comment down below. Is that something that the army would allow in that time of time in that time frame? Because I'm thinking no. I'm right. thinking no. My brother here, he's a you know he was he served 
but you know he was different branch but you know I, i'm thinking no i'm yeah. thinking no because the last thing you know there's a battle attacking and all of a sudden hold on let me fix my hair <laughs> you know i mean it's like I mean, you don't have time to fix your hair, man. They're, the Japanese are, you know, the Viet, the Viet Cong is coming. Yeah. You know, hold on. I need gel. You know, tss, you, know <laughs> like, you don't have that time. So anyway, so fast forward to episode uh, 10. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, it, it, it was the culmination, right? It was, this is the point where now we're, we're, we're all kind of going, in, you know, we're, we're, they're, they're, you know, they're not, the, the way the writers are doing, they're not calming things down. They're turning it up. They're turning up the, the 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 juices, and there you're like, gosh, damn it, these writers are awesome, right? And um, so you know when Robbie, you know, again, I think Robbie achieved his goal, which was to hurt jo Johnny and to hurt Daniel by siding with John Kreese. And I know John Kreese is doing it not only now, you know, definitely definitely to learn not only learn Miyagi Do style, but he knew that that was gonna be the the, the, the thorn in their side about how much they both failed the same kid, right? How much they both failed the same kid. And that was going to be an issue. But I love the fact that, you know, that, um, what's his name? Uh, Johnny went over there and finally kicked John Kreese's ass, you know? And then, of course, you know, he his son got hurt. And then, you know, John Kreese, the, the, the snake that he is, takes him, you know, is just ready to kill them. And, of course, Daniel comes over and saves the day. Love, I absolutely love that. And they're both fighting John Kreese together. And I'm like, and then finally, you know, J uh, Daniel finally uses the upper, you know, Miyagi Do 2.0, right? <laughs> yeah. And started doing, you know, the, 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 de the deadening of the nerves so that, you know, to use that as a technique. And just when they were about to do it, of course. Such a great payoff from earlier. Yeah. It's, 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 you're totally, it's leading up to it. And now, and now, and I'm thinking like one of the first episodes of season four was like, do you know how to do that, Robbie? Hell no, I've never been taught that. The hell is that, you know? And, um, and of course, I don't think that, I, you know, I mean, that's why I'm thinking maybe I, it's most likely silver, but what if it's somebody else? That's what I'm just thinking. Maybe somebody else who has higher level of their style of karate, you know? And that, that's why, that's just, that's what's giving me pause. I, I that's think what's giving me pause. Silver will have, like Silver brought in that one white dude in part three. Right. I think Silver is their secret weapon. I think you might be right about Silver being Daniel's father. That's going to be the no, secret not Daniel. weapon. Miguel. I mean, Miguel. not Daniel, but uh, Miguel. I think yeah. you might be right about that. Because right. who, who would be a great foil to them in, in, for this tournament? Because, you know, obviously it's going to be Miguel versus Robbie. I don't, I, I don't think there's no question. It's going to be there's Miguel no versus Robbie. Sam after the tutelage Corey. of both Johnny and Daniel. But and then Sam who would they Corey. bring out that could affect him? His possible father, which yeah. would be Silver. But then Silver's right. secret weapon in training Robbie will be Silver, the, the, the one, the, the, the special martial artist that Silver brought in. Having Silver and then that guy train with Kreese, right. Robbie. Right. And no, he no, probably has like some new technique. That's right. what so, I think well, is first all, I don't. I don't think. I don't My think prediction. they're gonna bring guy. Hold on. What was the guy's name? What was the guy's character's name? Hold on. Let I me, can't let remember. Let me Google it right now. Karate yeah. Kid. Three. Three cast. Okay, hold on. Let me get this. Because um, it's just something. It's Mike what Barnes, the writers Mike would Barnes. do. Mike Barnes. Yeah. Okay. I don't think. I don't think Mike Barnes is gonna. I don't think he's gonna be the guy that they call in to be the higher level of karate for for Cobra Kai. Because Mike Barnes' character. When he when he met Terry Silver, he was he did not train in Cobra Kai. He trained in his own style of karate. That is true, right? He, that is true. He trained in his own. So he's not really Cobra Kai. He was just a hired gun, right? He was just a hired gun. And I think they're both the new 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 uh, new uh, instructors though with Kreese. I think they were. I think they're gonna bring in another instructor. I just don't yeah. think. I mean, they might bring in another instructor, but I just don't think it's gonna be Mike Barnes because one, he lost. You know, like, why are you going to bring yeah. in a loser into the, the, into the thing, right? I think they, I think you're right. They will most likely bring Silver back, but I think maybe. And the, be the financier. Yeah, you know? be the financier. They, they have a whole exactly. season to get up into this tournament. Right. So they got to fill the season. I think, I, you know what? I think Silver will be back, but if, as a financier, but training with Crease will be Mike Barnes. They got to bring Mike Barnes back. He's still working. I'm, I'm looking at his ID profile. He's still working. He's a working actor right now. No, I get that. I absolutely get oh, that. Like, I mean, I just don't think they're going to bring him back. I think you could be right there. There could be a superstar potential. What if, 
oh, you just got me thinking. What if? Because they're bringing in elements of everything. Right. They're bringing elements of everything. The Hillary Swank in part four. And we do have that Will Smith runs this with Jaden in the thing. Right. We could, why not bring in those characters from part four and five? I think, it, and I mean, we do have Jackie Chan still alive, man. Right, but the I anti know, I get, Miyagi by making a Jackie Chan. Well, be, I, okay, let me just say this: I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be Jackie Chan because his style is. <laughs> that's out of left field. That's out of no, left. Field. I, I, I get that. I get that. I mean, you know, this is reality, and you're way over there. So all kind of stuff. Um, uh, so you're like pulling it from different genres now. Anyway, I, I just don't think it's going to be. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people within the martial arts industry didn't really like Karate Kid with Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan because it wasn't karate. It was Kung Fu, True. right? In fairness, in fairness, I mean, but of course the name of the franchise name is Karate Kid, right? Yeah. So, I mean, maybe if is, they call- father in there. So you right. bring that so, in. Right. So I just don't think it's going to be, I, don't, I just don't think they're going to bring in Jackie Chan. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't think they can afford him. True. Because <laughs> he is a multi, you know, yeah. he, he commands 20, 20 plus yeah. million. Yeah, you know, so I don't think they're gonna be able to bring him in, and it's yeah. too small of a screen for him. They could afford um, Hillary though. Hillary, Hillary, Hillary Swank ain't doing much at the moment. I think they can afford Hillary, but I think they might bring in the 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 antagonist of Karate Kid Four, which was um, Michael Ironside. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> now you got me looking that up. Uh, Karate Kid Four cast. Yeah, Michael Ironside, Colonel Dugan. Oh. Now I got to go watch Karate Kid 4 now. Yeah, so if they're, if they're going to bring out anybody, I think it, it would be him. Because okay. he is military, right? So we don't know if Ooh. that's that, that they're the same unit. Ooh. I like that even more now. Right. Because that's Chris what I'm trying being to say. the military. Ooh, I like that. Mm-hmm. Ooh, and remember, I like that. Remember, Chris was only a captain. This guy's a colonel. So he could definitely be the higher level version of what they're trying to do. He could be. I don't know. I'm, I'm, we're just guessing here now. We're just guessing, right? And you're bringing back so, silver. We know he's bringing back silver. You I'm, I'm pretty sure that he's military back squad going on. It's military right. team. You know, it's brotherhood. Right. You bring it's in absolutely- iron side. You bring in silver. Mm-hmm. Bro. That's it. Prediction. I Let think us know in the not- comments if you think we're going to agree with that. Like, we got yeah, a year. But I we got a year. We got a year. Exactly. It makes sense. It makes total sense. And I just think that I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they all went to the monastery. The the Miyagi Do uh, Eagle Eagle Fang, if they go to the monastery to change, I mean that wouldn't be that wouldn't be too left field kind of stuff. But we also have to keep in mind that not many, uh, not many of the karate kid fans love karate kid four. True. Right. True. They loved it because they watched it because Mr. Miyagi was there and it's it's we just missed it. Right. But I not many people really love Karate Kid 4. So I don't think how yeah. much I don't know if they're gonna use that much elements of Karate Kid 4 into Cobra Kai season four. Wait, four and four. There you go. But um, but I do believe that yeah, I think Terry Silver is gonna be there. If they are gonna use elements from Karate Kid 4, it would be Michael Ironside, Colonel Dugan, would be probably be brought into that. They probably have the same military background. They're probably this. I mean, you know, they're age wise, they're about the same, right? So, um, and, and you know, you know, Jester's dead, Jester's dead, he ha, Jester's. I'm no, sorry, Top Gun, wrong reference, right? But, uh, but they could, they could definitely, they can definitely do that. I think that that's that that would be the way they're doing now. Now, writers, if you're watching this and you, you got that, listen, I just want to, hey. I just want to be. Me, me and Patrick just want to be tree number two in Cobra Kai season four. I'm already in LA, so I mean, or I mean, I'm in California already, so it wouldn't be that far for me to go there and just kind of walk by, you know, and just you know, kind of say, walk by. That's all I want, right? Yeah, just give but, a brother yeah, cameo, but, you know what I'm saying? I'll yeah, fly just out give there. a brother cameo. I'll, yeah, exactly. Shoot, I'll take the COVID test just to fly out there, man, just yeah. to go out there, man. So, but I mean, ultimately, I think that's what it is. Now, what I love about this again was like when when. Johnny and and Daniel finally put their shit aside because it's not it's not it's not even about their honor anymore. It's about Robbie. Yeah. It's it's it is about Robbie and the kids and the other kids. Yeah. Right. They know now that his karate is is dangerous. It's very dangerous. Now I've always said this to my students. Like I said, like I'm not teaching underwater basket weaving. FMA is known to be very very deadly. 
very, very deadly. So Filipino martial arts is very, very deadly. So I am very picky in who my students are and who are not my students. And because I'm not teaching underwater basket weaving, I'm not teaching, you know, floral design. I'm teaching people how to kill, possibly kill other people. So they see that with the wrong instructor could be extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous. And you have to also understand that students have a cult like, can have a cult like mentality towards you. Like, you know, sensei or guru can't do no wrong. You know, he walks on water, he turns water into wine. Everything he says is, is, is prophetic, right? So you, you tend to, you, it's very, very dangerous. And the way to keep myself, you know, to pop that bubble, I always remind myself that I work for my students. They pay me to teach them my skills, right? And so I always, that's how I keep myself in check. And of course I have my seniors that keeps me in check, but it is very easy for a martial arts instructor to put themselves in God status and then definitely have the students put them in God status. And you know that saying, absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is very, very possible. That is very, very real. And look, and then, I mean, you remember Karate Kid, what? It was a cult that the, the John Kreese had with his Cobra Kai's, right? And they would, they will, you know, they, even though they know morally that it's wrong for them to follow that order, they'll follow it because it, they feel it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, I would, I, I don't think they're going to bring back Hillary Swank. Maybe they can afford her, but I don't think they're going to bring back. Yeah. I really, I would love to see Jackie Chan because I, I mean, he's my favorite, yeah. but I just don't think they can afford him. Yeah. Right. Um, but I definitely do believe that Michael Ironside, that could be another person that they're bringing into the, into the fold, as well as Terry Silver into that. And I just think that that's uh, pretty amazing. Now, um, I, I, I think that at first you're going to see at the season four, my prediction uh, and I think this is a safe prediction that it's going to be rough and tough in how they're going to be teaching. Because like I said, in my school, I have final say, you know, if, you know, like the way, even I've made senior students, like they'll teach them one way. I'm like, Nope, that's not the way I want it done. Do it the way I, I want it done. Right. And, and then I will pull aside my senior students. Like, listen, I know you do it this way. I get that, but I want you to teach it this way. And then if they want to change it later, that's completely on them, right? But for now, let's kind of do it this way. And they're, you know, they're very agreeable to that. They're not, it's not a conflict, but the, you know, the buck stops here. You know, I, you know, I have to have final say, I don't know how these two are gonna, I would really love to see that. Like, I would love to see that dynamic, uh, you know, course, you know, work out, it work itself out kind of stuff. And as well as the Cobra Kai kids, I mean, the Eagle Fang and the uh, uh, Miyagi-Do students, um, they were talking about changing the name. They're going to become one school and changing the name. So maybe it's the Eagle resting on the bonsai. I don't know. So, I mean, I don't know how they're going to work that out, but I'd be really interesting to see that. Uh, I do predict that that's what's going to happen. I think we're finally going to find out who there's got to be some sort of connection between Tori and Allie with an eye, because the last name is too unique. You know, the last name is too unique. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm thinking that there's got to be a connection to that. And I really, really, really believe that they're going to bring Chosen to season four. You know, Daniel's going to fly him out and say, now teach my guys this new higher level form of Karate Kid that John Kreese hasn't seen yet. I mean, it's, it's, that's, that would be, I think that would be the, the great closing of the circle between Chosen and Daniel. Not only does he, Daniel respect him and they like each other, they're friends, but he respect him enough. And that's huge respect to say, this guy no more, knows more than I do. Let him teach us, right? Now, I don't know how that's going to affect Johnny and Chosen. Oh, I would love to see them fight. Oh, that would be, that would be bomb, right? But, um, but yeah, I think that I would love to, I think they would fly a Chosen to be somebody that teaches them this new technique that John Kreese hasn't seen yet, has no idea yet. And then they, at, at the, <clears throat> Just like in season episode three, I mean, uh, Karate Kid three and Karate Kid one, the first Karate Kid, it was techniques that Cobra Kai uh, has never seen before, right? When, when Daniel did the crane kick, they've never seen that before. They, they don't know what to do with it. And in Karate Kid three, when, when Daniel started doing the kata, they, have ne like, they don't know how to hit him. It's like, I don't know how to hit him like this, right? And he was able to, you know, so... They're gonna they're gonna bring the element like the higher level form of, of Miyagi Do Karate. He's gone, Sato is gone. Chosen being now the senior the, the the senior Miyagi Do instructor. And in all fairness to Daniel, Chosen would definitely be his senior, 
because he's, he, you know, the, you know, Mr. Miyagi's gone and, you know, and he, and Mr. and clearly in the previous episode, Mr. Miyagi didn't show him all the techniques that the, the Miyagi do has chosen that has it. So chosen would definitely be his senior kind of stuff in all, in all respect to that. And I think Daniel would be humble enough to bring chosen out there and say, okay, teach my guys, teach my guys this new technique. Let's work this out. Let's, let's come up with a strategy to beat Cobra Kai. And I, and most likely they're going to, they're going to learn how to fight. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to study how each of those guys fight. Now, the great thing, the difference between 1984 to 2020 is that everybody's got a camera phone. So there will definitely be more footage of the Cobra Kai kids doing their techniques at the previous All Valley tournament. So they're going to watch them. And keep in mind that they also now have somebody from the inside in Cobra Kai, in, in Eagle Fang, which was Hawk, right? Hawk is now the guy that's, that he knows how they've been training also. And keep in mind that Johnny knows how John Kreese teaches. So, you know, I, I, I think that those are the, like how they're going to, they're going to, both styles. All, all three schools, Cobra Kai style, Miyagi-Do style, needs to go boom right here. Now, maybe Miyagi-Do is going to go this high and Cobra Kai is going to go this high or, or other way around. We don't know, right? But definitely, I, my, my martial arts prediction, they're going to have to one-up themselves. They're going to have to evolve into a 2.0 level. They're going to have to pull in other instructors. I, myself, am not ashamed and not, I'm, not, I'm not arrogant enough to think that I know everything. I do though, but not, but not know everything. I bring in my teachers all the time and I bring in other instructors from other styles to come in and teach my students because I'm not the end all, end all and be all of, of FMA, I am. But you know, I mean, I'm just saying that it's, it's a way for them to, to kind of learn that. So I think that's my big prediction that they're gonna be bringing people, both, both groups and I'm, and I'm lumping Eagle Fang and, and Miyagi-Do as one now because against Cobra Kai, they're going to have to one up their style. And I think that's what's going to be, that's what's going to fill the next 10 episodes because technically they can just go straight to the all Valley, but then what are we going to do with the other nine episodes? Right? So I think that's how they're going to fill in the, the first 10 episodes. The first, the first segment would be how do these two schools get along and then finally coming up with a fighting plan. And then they're going to bring that, the, the, the instructors and then they train and then they fight. That's my prediction. What do you think? I echo that. I uh, echo that as well. I think that that's going to be the, the the problematic thing for season four is how does Johnny and Daniel get along with their competitive, even though they're trying to work together, which is great. We love, I love that, right. but they right. are two different people. So right. uh, I think they're going to butt heads. And what I think these writers are brilliant on is, okay, we're going to be like, oh, they have the advantage for just those things. Like you said, Hawk was there, but now mm -hmm. Hawk is with them. So that could be advantage Miyagi Do Co Cobra Kai. I uh, mean Miyagi Do right. Eagle Fang, right? Um, but they're gonna, but they're gonna just butt heads so much that there's gonna need somebody to come in, and I, I'm gonna have to go with what you said. I didn't know what would be the X factor to help merge it. I think mm -hmm. you might be right. Bring in Chosen, that would be perfect. Right. To then kind of be the one to bridge the gap and bring everybody right. together, and right. uh, and actually help Miguel because we know Miguel will be their key fighter towards the end. So right. and I. Sam. I I'm 100% with you. Miguel and Sam. Yeah. Miguel and I think Sam. It's yes. Miguel and Sam. Because, yeah, I, it's going to be Miguel and Sam against Tori and Rob. No, sorry. No, it's Miguel Miguel versus Robbie and, 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 and Sam Tori and against Tori. Robbie. Yeah. I mean, right. Sam against Tori. Yes. Miguel <laughs> no, against dating. Robbie. Stop. <laughs> Sam against Tori. So, right. yeah. So I think they're going to need to have somebody there. And then, with that being said, like everybody's got to level up. So right. I think you're right. Crease is going to bring in Silver as a financier. And Crease will uh, bring in a silver. Will then need to have another X factor, and I think it is a good prediction with with uh, Ironside. It's, it's left Ironsides field. It's left field, in. but it makes sense. Um, but then we could be bring something completely new into this field, and that'll be interesting who they bring in for that. But right. I think a safe bet would be to bring in Ironside and bring mm -hmm. like a more militaristic structure and more hardcore right. kind of fighting style, right, right. a whole different thing to, to tackle that. Right. So, right. Yeah, I think that's lines up. I, I think yours and I predictions for season four line up. Right. Um, I, I hope we see Chosen to, to come back. Uh, I would love to see Kamiko come back. I want to yeah. see Ali come back. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think. I would love to see Ali. Kind of how you finish this all off. Uh, I would I'm love not to sure see how you kind of keep on going from here, but I would love to see kind of all these characters come back to to good give a nice bow to to wrap up season four. Because mm -hmm. I'm not sure where you go after season four. To be honest with you. 
you you bring everybody back you have all these characters now you know finalizing out their relationships um i think it's a, a great way to end the the this whole karate kid storyline and mm-hmm. cobra kai trilogy mm-hmm. um I'm, I'm with you uh, I d- i'm just ready for this ride man uh i'm, I'm ready for this ride it's, and it's honestly great. i love the fact that you and i can't think of what's going to be season five you know what yeah I love the fact that they because... do give us season five. Oh my God. I, I'm not, that I'm com- not that I don't want it. Of but course, it's a of great course. button to end this off with season four with, right. with, with what they're doing. Absolutely. I think that they're, they're de- I mean, they're definitely doing such a great job with these stories and how they're closing things up, but it doesn't mean that they're not opening things up also. That's true. We don't know. We don't yeah. know how this is really going to, completely play out maybe there's some easter eggs that we haven't picked up because we don't have any references to it yet right yeah so i i definitely do believe that that it's good you know i want to say that there's gonna be seasons five six seven eight infinity um and beyond but um but at the same time i definitely don't want it to you know jump the shark yeah you know if you know what i mean yeah. right so yeah. uh but season four that's my prediction they're gonna bring in chosen they're gonna bring hopefully for for the miyagi do uh, eagle fang side um, and and then you know, learn how to work together, and then and then you know tie tie it all in a bow. I mean Johnny, looking at his looking at his martial art lineage, his lineage is John Kreese, and so they're definitely not they're gonna work with them. So I think Johnny would be open to Chosen. I wouldn't be surprised if Chosen and John Kreese actually get along. And Daniel's like, oh great, now they're teaming up. Now you know, oh great, this is great, you know, kind of stuff, right? But um, oh. Before we also, so we had our predictions, but uh, uh, what would you like to see happen is, is a question I have for you. Um, I think I've already kind of stated mine. Uh, of all the characters, I would like to, I think it's predictable what's going to happen with Robbie and Daniel and like what, we, what we've already predicted. So right. to me, that kind of makes sense. But the one character that I spoke about, you know, with this season, who they kind of left off in, I'm very curious and I don't know what they're going to do with Tori. How is she going to 360 from all these experiences? I kind of have an idea what I think they're going to do with Robbie. Obviously, Robbie's yeah. got to find his way back to wanting to be True. with his dad. Right. Um, or but he's going to be, I think it's going to be with that whole mil- militaristic structure being right. under, he's going to finally realize because Crease is an asshole. He's going to yeah. realize Crease is an asshole. Even more so, Silver is a bigger asshole. So yeah. he's going to see even how much more Silver is a dickhead. Right. And then if you're exactly. bringing uh, Ironsides, Ironside is an amazing actor, but is a supreme dickhead. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That is gonna bring Robbie's character 360. But I think what that's are they gonna do with Tori? Is what I don't know. I think here's the thing. I think Tori is is is. I, I think she's gonna have to realize that she is also. I mean, what's her conflict? Her conflict is is like she's got a lot of anger, right? She's got a lot of anger, so she needs to find a positive outlet for her negative energy. Right. And, and for many of us, and I'm seeing that in the martial arts side, that mar- training is our out- positive outlet for our negative energy. But what John Kreese is doing is that he's stoking that negative energy in his studio, in his dojo to be able to do that. So I think the biggest issue that the writers might have is how do they make, how does the, how does Tori finally accept that, you know, about her life. Like she's been through a lot. She's been through, you know, she's also going, she's on probation because they remember Robbie and her r- r- runs into each other through that probation office, right? How does she, how does she turn her life around? I honestly don't know. I mean, it's like, I, I, I don't want to say that, you know, she's going to hook up with Robbie or she's going to hook up with Miguel and then she's going to be happy. I, I just don't think that our, our, our today's writers are a lot smarter that they're not looking for, uh, uh, you know, hero in white, in, you know, the knight in shining armor type of persona. I think that Tori's going to find, have to find a way to be, to save herself and her family. How that, I don't know. I think that's the challenge that the writer is going to have to find. But these writers are great. So I'm, I'm not, I won't be surprised if they figured that out. But that's going to be the hardest thing that for me to be able to uh, predict that. The, of course, the, right now, the biggest, one of the conflicts that they have is, you know, is it going to be Team Robbie or Team, Team Miguel? Who's, who's Sam going to go with, right? Um, so I think that no matter what, I think my prediction is going to be with Miguel because she never really got over him. It was always him. Even when she was with Robbie, she was always thinking about Miguel. And I think, I think Robbie's just going to need to accept that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to say this, but maybe Robbie 
and Tori hooks up and they become together. But I just don't, I just, I just think that the writers have more depth than to have the white and shining armor uh, scenario and then rescue Tori being rescued kind of stuff. Right. But maybe, maybe it could be that she, she, okay, here's my prediction. What maybe Tori finally realizes that John Kreese is an ass. Right. And no matter what, uh, no matter who she, he brings in Tori. And now that especially the Hawk is gone, Tori is the, you know, primo student now. You know, he, she is the, she's the top dog now, right? Nobody, nobody else that they bring in can beat her yet, right? She is the, she's the alpha in, in, the, in the students. She could be the one that walks away from John Kreese. I think that's, I think she's going to have to accept that John Kreese, he, she doesn't know anything to John Kreese. Maybe she feels indebted because of the way he rescued her from that creepy landlord, right? But um, I think, but ultimately, I think she needs to save herself. And how they get it up? That's my best prediction: is that she finally see John Kreese, you know, the level that he's at, and and then it's and then maybe maybe Johnny will tell her, "Don't fall into that pit of despair," because that's what took me this long to get out of it. Yeah. Right. So the realization that John Kreese is really a snake in the grass. You know, he's a real asshole to begin with. So that's my closest prediction. How they're gonna pull that off? I don't know exactly, but I think that that's what's gonna happen. Now I also predict that Miguel and and Miguel's mom. And Johnny are going to be together. Oh yeah, I think yeah. that's that's my that's my prediction. I think Ali is great, but she's she's the past. Yeah, right. She's the past, and you know I think they finally found some closure in that. But I think they're gonna they're definitely gonna hook up. Um, they're gonna you know they're gonna be they're gonna be the couple. You know, yeah. kind of stuff. Um, how that gonna play with Terry Silver? I don't know. We're still predicting that Terry Silver is Miguel's dad. We'll see. You know, but I think that that's the. The hardest thing to predict now the, the biggest question like you mentioned is what's season five but we're not there yet we're not there well we'll watch season four and go from there but absolutely season four or season three oh my gosh writers these are amazing guys <laughs> yes. absolutely amazing and then of course you know when the when the season ended when everybody dies i'm like that's crazy i'm like what they get hit by a bus i don't understand this, <laughs> this you know guy. so but but yeah i mean they definitely left us wanting more yeah. Definitely left us wanting I'm, more. I'm and upset that I, I, well, like I said, we, we talked about this uh, with uh, some of the earlier season recaps uh, when we we're doing one and two. Um, it's great that I love the Netflix gives it to you all. It, it fulfills that appetite, but unlike with Amazon Prime or some of the others that make you wait, there's something to be said about that. You know? Yeah. It, it kind of extends out, gives you reason to live. Now, right. like I don't know. Now I can die. I can die now. I can because I can die happy. I'm happy with what I got. But I want. How can you? But you can't because you need to see season season four. Yeah. Like you know, how do they beat John Trace? Oh, it's just ah, there is something to be said about that. But uh, yeah, no, there's something to be said about that. I mean, it's instant gratification. Yeah. And it was good, man. Favorite of the three seasons uh, so far? Yes or no? Yes, it's definitely my favorite of my three seasons because. My favorite episode, I mean, my favorite of the Karate Kids was was part two, with Okinawa, okay. and they went they brought back to Okinawa, and and I miss the whole time I'm watching season one, two, and three, I miss Mr. Miyagi. Yeah, and I'm just glad that the writers recognized that Mr. Miyagi was such an integral part of the Karate Kid franchise that they're not forgetting him in the Cobra Kai series. Yeah, they're and the way they gave straight, us that episode this season. It gave I mean, there's back. They gave us back. They gave us back to him in pieces, but they gave it back. They, they they gave it back. They gave us back to him. I mean, like that movie Jumanji with Kevin Hart and and uh, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, right? They had one snippet on Robin Williams' character. Yeah. But they didn't do any more homage to him. They didn't like we dedicate this film to Rob. They didn't do any of that yeah. stuff. That's why I refuse to watch any more of the Jumanjis, because I'm like, no, you can't. Robin Williams made that movie. Yeah. Right. Robin Lee Williams made that movie. If anybody says otherwise, come fight me. All right. My name is Patrick Strange. I live in <laughs> Washington, D.C. Right. Come find me. OK, come find me. But um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's just like they they're, they're the writers are giving so much right homage and so much right respect to Mr. Miyagi's character. Um, and they're and they're and he's still there. He's still there. You feel his presence. The flashbacks, the 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 memories that Daniel has about about his tutelage from Mr. Miyagi, 
It is absolutely brilliant. And I love what the bartender said. That's very, only an American would think that you can't visit him anymore, that you can't be with him anymore, right? Yeah. And I love that. And I think they're going to take that to heart. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, I think I, I'm, I love this season because it brought back Kimiko. It brought back Chosen. It closed that, 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 that storyline for me. Um, they brought back Ali with an eye. You know, that definitely closed that, that for me. So I, this is, because, th- I mean, these are the things that the original Karate Kid fans have been hoping for, right? Absolutely hoping for it. They definitely, definitely need to to do this. So I, I need to give up before, I'm sorry, I, have, I should have, I told you this brother and I forgive me, but I need to give a shout out to my student, Eric Palermo, because he was, I was training with him today and I said, hey, so what'd you think of Cobra Kai? And he said, what's that? He doesn't even know, bro. He does. I'm, yeah, I'm calling you out, man. I, yeah, you're you're getting called out, bro. Is that he didn't even know he he loves the first Karate Kids, but he doesn't know Cobra Kai. And he's like, oh, because I don't have Netflix. Me and my other students are like, we will share our password with you. Go watch it. What's wrong with you? Get out of my school. I told him this. Get out of my school, man. I'm like, because I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, you better be sorry. I mean, don't know everybody's going to see this video that's going to live on the internet for eternity and know that this guy messed up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. You can, I mean, you, you got to live under a special piece of, I mean, you're a special rock for you not to know Cobra Kai. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, oh, I actually had him. I filmed him admitting that he doesn't, I'll put it on my TikTok. So just, I'm a, just like, mm. so, but yeah, so I, uh, sorry, Eric. I love you, but I'm calling you out. That's just, that's your fault. Um, so it's been around since 2018. So no, that's your fault. Um, but yeah, so I, I just think that this is season three, the best season out of, out of all of them so far, because they brought it back to, oh, yeah. we just, we only just, if this was the only reason, it's still a good enough reason is that they brought it back to Okinawa and they brought back, and they also showed us the story of John Kreese yeah. and the mere fact that they made me start liking John Kreese, even though I don't yeah. want to like him. They're making me starting to like him a little bit. So uh, it's it's the emotional roller coaster that they gave us. And the mere fact that Amanda was not just a trophy wife. You know, she was not just a trophy wife. She was the one that says, hey, he slaps John Kreese. You know, that's just, that to me is baller, right? There does yeah. baller status. And, yeah. and ultimately, they brought back that girl who rang the bell. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Uh, you know, why did you so wanted it? But we they get wow, wow, they gave it wow, they gave it. I really thought that it was chosen that's gonna save uh LaRusso, uh, you know, uh, Otto. I really thought it was gonna be uh, chosen because, like, you know, his his uncle was loaded, right? Yeah, but it, oh, you, you bastards, thrilling, <laughs> I love you. I'll buy you a drink next time. If I ever meet you guys, I'll buy you guys a drink, then slap you so it doesn't hurt so hard. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, man, that was so good, guys. If yep. you guys haven't watched it yet, too bad. We spoiled it for you guys already. <laughs> but... <laughs> Eric, yeah, man. I know this you're watching great, this. Man, we, d- yeah, just, just, just amazing. Um, we will be back, hopefully, with Cobra Kai Season 4. Um, I would love to do this again with you, partner. But until then, oh, uh, what we will have coming to the channel, as I started in the beginning, uh, we are going to break down Seasons 1 and 2 of Warrior, Warrior, uh, that was exactly. on Cinemax. Now it's on HBO Max. Um, so right. stay tuned for that as uh, me and my man break down Warrior. A little bit more adult, a little bit more fun, a little bit more risque. Right. But uh, right, right. Some good so shit. Very, it's very Bruce Game Lee, of Thrones. Man. Bruce fucking Lee. Yeah. Yeah. The classic and ev- legend. Everybody, I mean, if you're, you know, every martial artist loves Bruce Lee. Yeah. Sorry. I know not everybody, might, somebody might say that they don't. Well, go, they, they, don't care about you. So yeah. <laughs> your, your, your mama eats rice. You know, that's. <laughs> Your mom eats complex carbohydrates. Big boy, tell them how they can hit you up online beyond just here at the NRW. Of course, of course. So you can always reach me on my TikTok account, Big Boy Screamador, or all my you know social media at at FMA School on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or visit my website at www.fmaschool.com. Yes, sir. So, and brother, how can they get a hold of you, man? How can they get more of you? Uh, man, yo, appreciate it. You can follow me, Kuya P, at Temple Far East and at Strange Since 1977. Those are my personals uh, here at the NRW, New Release Wednesday, that I said, and at the uh, Nerds of Color, which is our POC pop culture specific site. And if you're a Pinoy or not Pinoy, but you want to check out our history and learn about our culture, 
uh, because we've been doing it in the industry for a long time, such as me and my boy, uh, big boy, we're Pinoy's. Uh, check out Show Pow Show. That's uh, a project just saying, just saying. showcasing uh, our contributions to the world, man. I hope you all check it out. But uh, man, until then, check out all of our reviews. Uh, we got a lot of stuff coming your way beyond karate centric stuff. Uh, of course, I know and don't forget me and me and Big Boy's been talking about a lot of other comic book stuff and just everything. Oh, yeah. we got, we'll be, we'll be we got a lot of good stuff we'll coming y'all's way, man. Right. And don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that notification button so that you're alerted the next time a video drops yes, from sir. NRW so that you guys can continue watching this great content. Now, if you really like us, if you have any questions or concerns or even just comments, comment down below. We'll do our best to answer them, you know, and just reply to them and, and, you know, and then share this to as many people as you know, you know, so just again, for those of you guys who love Cobra Kai, the Karate Kid series, I think this is a, a healthy discussion about, about the, the series and why it's so great. Uh, we, you know, both nerds, I'm a martial artist, you know, so it's, it's something that's definitely that, you know, I think it gives, it gives it a great perspective. So thanks a lot, guys. Oh, no, what's wrong with me? So thanks a lot, guys, for watching. <laughs> yes. So, so much fun. Thank you. Asalamu alaikum. We out of here. Peace. Peace.